We greet you in the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that his spirit will touch each one, that we might be filled with that power from on high. Our speaker tonight is Willie Moore, and he doesn't need to be introduced to this congregation. And I know Willie for many years and I know that he has made preparation tonight and like all of us we need he needs your prayers and um, looking forward to his message the scripture I like to read comes from uh, Moroni the seventh chapter starting with the 52nd verse and 53rd. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all, for all things must fail. But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it 
at the last day it shall be well with him. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart that ye may be filled with this love which he has bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ, that ye may become the sons of God, that when ye shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified even as he is purified. Amen. Let us uh, turn our hymnals to 193. And as soon as you found your place, would you stand, please? Almighty God, our King and our Creator, we come before Thee tonight, Heavenly Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking You, Lord, for all the good things and all the things that have come our way that has enlightened us and brought us even closer unto Thee. We thank You, Heavenly Father, for this day that You have created, that we have opportunity to come again and worship Thee together and in unity. And we pray tonight, Heavenly Father, that as our brother brings a message that he will enlighten us with what he has to say and bring us hope and even increase our faith, Heavenly Father, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, we may be lifted up, Lord, and be worthy of sanctification. So let us, Heavenly Father, at this time be willing to discipline ourselves and take self-centeredness out of our lives that we may be able to hear thy word and hear it clear, Lord. And may Brother Willie bring it to us, Heavenly Father, unmolested, that it may be pure and undefiled by those uh, enemies that are outside. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to be with us, with thy spirit. This day has been a spiritual day, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that it will continue, and that we may be uplifted and brought closer unto thee. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The 
The scripture reading that I'm going to read to you tonight comes from uh, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 37th and 38th and 39th verse. And uh, also I will be uh, from John 3.16. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might, mind, and strength. That's the greatest commandment right there that God gave out. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And the second unto it is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. For if you can't love your neighbor that you can see, how can you love the Lord God that you cannot see? Also from Doctrine and Covenants, I'd like to read this to you. And now, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Put thy trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good, to do justly, to walk humbly, to judge righteously. And this is my spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you my spirit, which shall enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. And then shall ye know, or by this shall ye know all things whatsoever you desire of me, which is pertaining unto the things of righteousness, in faith believing in me, that you shall receive. And in Doctrine and Covenants section 18, it also says, Learn of me, and listen to my words. Walk in the meekness of my spirit, and you shall have peace in me. I am Jesus Christ. I am by the will of the Father, and I do his will.
God is great. And you know, uh, I was running around the other day and I looked at uh, the trees. There's, everything is green. And then you see blue and you see a lot of white. And I think those are God's favorite colors because the trees look so beautiful. And I even got a tree piece here tonight that I pulled off out here by the church. But I want you to know, that came off the same tree. But each one of those leaves, you can put it together and they're different. Every one of them is different. than There's none alike. And that's just the way I'm looking at you people here tonight. You're all created different. God created you. You're special. God has created each and every one of you. You are his sons. You are his daughters. And he loves you. He loves you so much that he, he gave his son for us. That we may have everlasting life because Adam and Eve, you know, messed up. But... He worked out another way. He, his son came down and, and, and said, I will show them the way. And he gave us another way. Jesus gave his life for you and I. And God created all things. Everything. He created you. And you know what's so unique? He created every one of us spiritually. Before we were naturally upon the face of this earth, we were created in heaven with God. And we were in heaven with God. And he taught us many things. He gave us our gifts. Or he gave us an agency to choose to what we want to do with our lives. And just to read a few things to you here. In the beginning, how did God bring about the gospel that, where we can know that he created these things? Through his prophets. And God started off right here. You took the first chapter of Genesis, verse 1, and he says, And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, I reveal unto you concerning this heaven and this earth. Write the words which I speak. Here Moses is telling, I mean, God is telling Moses what to write down so we as a people would know about God. And look at all the generations. Whoops, excuse me there. But Moses was getting the word from God to telling him. And God goes on. He says, I am the beginning. I am the end. The almighty God. By my only begotten, I created these things. And yea, in the beginning, I created the heavens and the earth upon which thou standest. And then he goes on, and if you go into the second chapter of Genesis. And I, God, created man in my own image, and I in, man, and in my image, in my only begotten, I created male and female. And you go on further in Genesis 2. And I, the God, Lord God, created all things which I have spoken spiritually before they were naturally Upon the face of the earth. And I, for I the Lord God. Had not caused it to rain upon the face of the earth. And I the Lord God had created all men. To till the ground. For in heaven I created them. And there was not yet flesh upon the earth. Neither in the air. Neither in the water. And I the God formed men from the dust of the ground. In the beginning was. Now here. This is where I see, and there's other scriptures that tells us where we were taught in heaven. You know, uh, our, we all got gifts and talents. Brenda's got a different gift than, than her husband, Jack, does. And, and Jimmy, she's got a gift. And we can just go on. We all have different gifts and talents that God gave us. And we know those gifts. But anyhow, in, in John, the first chapter... Or uh, verse 1, in the beginning was the gospel preached through the Son. Jesus is in heaven. He's, and he preached through the Son, and the gospel was the Word. And the Word was with the Son. And the Son was with God, and the Son was of God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him, not anything made which was made. 
In him was the gospel, and the gospel was the life, and the life was the light of man. Yes, God is love. He loves us so much. Every day he blesses each and every one of us. And I don't know about you, but I take it for granted sometimes. And I'm going to talk about faith a little bit here too here in just a little bit. But I'm going to say this much about it. You've all sat in your chair. You have faith in that seat that it won't fall down on you. And a lot of times you take it for granted. You come to church and you just sit in it. You don't think about what that seat could do. The Lord likes for us to have faith in him. That's what he is. He told us to put our faith in him. And our spirit is three things. Our spirit is three things. Thinking. What do you think in your life? Do you think about God? Or are you thinking about the ways of the world and, and put God over on the side shelf? That's just one part of your spirit. The second part of your spirit is feelings. Thinking and feelings. What are your feelings for Jesus Christ? And, of course, your actions, that's the third thing. And guess what follows? When you think something and you have feelings on something, your actions are going to follow what you think and what you feel. If you feel like you can't do dishes today, you might struggle with it. But anyhow, you are thinking and your feelings are about it, you know, I hate doing dishes. I, I, I do. I, I do help my wife with doing dishes, but I sure hate it. And just like the, yesterday, uh, I had to take my wife to the hospital because she was having some problems. Well, we took her to the emergency room. And we were standing in this, or sitting in this lobby, just a bunch of people. And this lady was in there with pain, hurting. And she'd say, pray for me. And she'd groan and pray for me and groan and carry on. And it came over me, will he go over there and pray for her? And in my, in my spirit, I said, no. Man, there's 20 other people in here. Now, what are they going to think? And it, that's right, who cares? I struggled with it, though. And finally I got up and I went over to that sister and I put my hands on her and the other lady, her, her sister was helping her. And I asked them, can I pray, stand over and pray for this lady? Oh, the, the sister was just happy. She says, yes, do it, please. So I did. And I felt the spirit of the Lord there. But afterwards, I thought, man, I should have jumped on that instead of just trying to put it off. Because I was kind of concerned about what everybody else would think. And we shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be opening to people and shake their hand and say, come and worship with me and know about Jesus Christ. Yes, God loves us very much. I'm going to tell you a, a testimony that really happened to me. It was some time back, but I was having some friends from California to come out to our house to stay with us over the weekend. And uh, I wanted to make sure my yard was A1 shape. So I went and jumped in the car with the gas can, went up to Quick Trip. And on the way to Quick Trip, I saw a car down the road with a hood just barely sticking up. I could just see barely the part of the hood. And a voice came to me, just a soft one, go help those people. I didn't listen to it. I kept driving. And it came again, just a little bit stronger. Go help those people. And I, I kept doing this, and I went to the gas station, filled my five-gallon can with gasoline, turned around, and I, as I was going back, I saw that that hood of that car over the hill, just, you know, enough of it, it was over the hill enough that I could just see the hood. But that voice came to me again, go help those people. And I hesitated, and I turned off the road going to 
to Blue Mills to head back to my house. And I got down the road by uh, past the school ways, and man, that voice came loud. Go help those people. So I turned around, and I went back down there and uh, down the hill, and then I had to go across on 24 and then come back up that hill. And I pulled up behind him, Ohio license plates. The man was in the driver's seat, the lady was in the other, and they both got out of the car about the same time, and the lady came back to me and she says, we've been praying for somebody to come and help us. <laughs> well, I told her I, what happened to me, you know, and, 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 but the real kicker was, guess what they needed? Gasoline, first time they ever been to Independence, Missouri, and they needed gasoline. They didn't know how close they were to a station because, you know, they were down over the hill enough. I, and so I poured gas in their car. We talked for a long time, and they, they believed in Jesus Christ, and they, prayer is very, very important. And we should pray all the time, but their prayer was answered. And I took them, showed them up to the gas station, and, and they got gas. And, and from there, I hadn't seen them since. But, but God works through us. We must have our lives in tune with God. And how do you have your lives in tune with God? You've got to put your faith in Him. You've got to believe in Him. And you've got to study His words. And the Lord says in, in, in uh, John, the 5th chapter, the 40th verse, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they what testify of me. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that we may have everlasting life. Yes, we need to, to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And live it in our lives. And when we pray, we need, prayer is a gift that each and every one of us have. We need to pray to him always. The Lord Jesus, he prayed. He prayed the night before he was going to get crucified. He prayed all the time. And he taught the disciples to pray. He taught us to pray, even by reading the scriptures, that we should pray and, and live our lives for Jesus Christ. Pray always. Seek him in prayer. Do you know words are spiritual? The songs you sang today, I didn't see the words. Did you see them? I, I saw them in the book. But out, they're, they're spiritual. You can hear them. You can feel them. And boy, that song, the spirit of a fire like a fire burning, buddy, I'm telling you. I felt that spirit. And I'll tell you what, the good Lord loves each and every one of us, and he wants us to pray to him. That's how we open that door and let Jesus in in our spirit of thinking and feeling and actions. We open that door of our spirit and let him in. By true prayer, through study, how do you go to know about God if you don't study his word? What does Bible mean? B-I-B-L-E, book of instructions before leaving the earth. And that's what we need to be doing is studying those instructions and applying them to our life because you're here on earth to work out your salvation. God gave you a way to come back to him in, in his eternal world and be with him forever. And I don't know about you, but I want to be with him. And I struggle every day. I'm in a spiritual war with, the, with this world every day. And I know you are too. Yes, God, Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit, three in one. And I, when I look at the sunshine, I think the sun is God. And I think the light of the sun is Jesus Christ. And I think the warmth of the sun is his Holy Spirit. Yes, God loves us and he's very, he cares for us. And I like to ask you, do you know who you are? Faith believing is who you are and what you stand for is what you are what are you or are you just a drifter one day this way another day this way another day this way in the ways of the world how is your faith in God you know all through the scriptures 
God talked about faith. There was a man that had a shriveled up arm. If you read it in the Bible, he had a shriveled up arm and he prayed every day in the synagogues that the, that arm would be healed. He prayed to the Lord. He had faith. Many years passed by and all of a sudden Jesus Christ came into that sanctuary. And the man didn't know who he was. But Jesus called him and said, come over here to me. And that man came over to him and he didn't want to take that arm out of his sleeve. He had it covered because it was so bad. But Jesus told him to pull it back. And when he did, he saw that his arm was healed. You know what Jesus told him? By your faith, you're healed. What about Jared? His daughter was dying. And oh, he came to Jesus crying. Lord, you've got to come down. You've got to come down. You've got to come because my daughter is dying. And Jesus says, well, let's go. But it was hard because there was thousands of people around Jesus. All wanting to see Jesus and, and have, feel that love that comes from him. And Jared was getting distressed because... Nobody was moving. And why they wasn't was because there was a woman that had a sickness. And she, for 12 years, the Bible says, and this woman, she had faith. And she believed that if I could just get to Jesus and touch his garment, I can be healed. I know it. Now, why did she want to just do that? Well, the reason was there's so many people around Jesus that he, she couldn't get to him no other way. So she ran down through there pushing and shoving and saying, excuse me, pardon me. And she made it and she touched Jesus' garment. And Jesus turned around, who touched me? Why did Jesus do that? Because he felt the spirit of his power going out of him. And he turned around and he saw this woman on her knees crying and confessing to Jesus what she done. And what did Jesus tell her? By your faith, you're healed. Now, Jairus, he still, his daughter was dying. And Jesus, went, I mean, Jared went up to Jesus again and said, we must go, Jesus, please. And about that time, a servant of Jairus came up and said, Jairus, your daughter's dead. And if you look in the scriptures, Jesus says, Jairus, have faith and believe. And it's in there, right in the scriptures here. Have faith and believe. And Jairus wondered, well, what does he mean by that? Have faith and believe. And so Jesus said, come on, Jairus. And we went and he told all the people here to stay. He says, we, we don't need to be down there at Jairus' house. So they went. Jesus, Jairus, and, and Peter, and John, and, and, and uh, there was the other disciple. I can't remember which one it was. But anyhow, they went to the house. And, of course, there was people there, you know, of whimpering and sorts and Jesus told him to get out that this girl is not dead she just rested and they laughed at him but Jesus went in there with the parents and his three disciples and Jesus went over to that little girl and says arise my daughter and she did and what did Jesus tell Jairus and his wife by your faith, you're healed. Now, my special one is Peter. Peter, he was a person that was outgoing. Boy, uh, in the scriptures, and I admire him for it. But here, Jesus was walking across the water. Walking across the water towards the ship, the boat they were in. And the waves were rough. And at first, the disciples saw Jesus and were scared. They thought he was a ghost. 
And Jesus told him, it's me. And Peter jumped up and says, Jesus, can I come out to you? Boy, what faith Peter had. And Jesus said, come on, Peter. Now, can you imagine what the other uh, 11 disciples were thinking when this all happened? In their spirit of thinking and feeling and what their actions was? Peter, don't do it. You're going to feel sorry, Peter. You can't do it. And they were just, you know, really amazed. You know, well, Peter showed them up, didn't he? He had his eyes on Jesus Christ. He had his eyes focused on Jesus Christ. And he stepped out on that water. And he's the only man today that I know that walked water besides Jesus Christ. And he walked that water. But what happened? He was walking along and those waves were kind of slushing around. And in his spirit, he got what? Doubt. Fear. Worry. Those ain't the spirit of God. Those are spirit of Satan. And he started having these spirits, you know, and he got scared and he started sinking. And what did he holler to Jesus? Oh, Jesus, save me. I'm drowning. Can you imagine what the disciples were doing? They were probably ready to throw a rope to him or something. But anyway, Jesus grabbed him and picked him up and put him in the boat. And what did Jesus tell him? Oh, Peter, oh, Peter. What little faith you had. If you just had faith of the size of mustard seed, you could move mountains. Yes, we must put our faith in God. Our thoughts are things, it's powerful things. Our thoughts are. Our thoughts have power to lift us up or to hold us down. Our, uh, and our power has... To create happiness or dissatisfaction. It could joy or pain, peace or stress, success or failure. Our thoughts can do a lot of things to us, but we must put our faith in Jesus Christ and stand fast for him. Faith is believing God without needing proof. When God makes a promise, you must choose to believe it or not believe it. Faith is a choice. Every day we have a choice. And I, again, a while ago, I told you God is love, and he is love. Love is not happy with evil, but it is full of joy when the truth is spoken. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. It never fails. The three most important things is faith, hope, and charity with an eye single to the glory of God. That's very important with an eye single to the glory of God. In other words, you can't have just a little bit of faith here on God and then have some over here on something else that you have. With an eye single to the glory of God, we must have faith in him always. Now tonight I gave you all a token. And the token says three things on it. Seek. We must seek the Lord, always seek him. That's what he wants us to do. It means to look up, look for, to do like that woman that touched Jesus' garment. She seeked him, didn't she? She wanted to be there with him. She had faith. She believed, and she was seeking out her Lord and Savior. She knew and we're called to seek our Lord. Trust. Oh man, the Lord. We must trust the Lord. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Didn't Daniel trust the Lord? Here they made a law where he couldn't pray. You know, you couldn't, nobody could pray. And there was a law made and, and uh, Daniel knew about it. But did that stop him from trusting God? No. He knew that God... Whatever God, he put his whole trust in God. All the way, trust is, it got faith in it too, you know, let you know. But anyhow, he trusted God so much that he walked into that lion's den and says, Lord, whatever thy will be, thy will be done. He trusted him. And we all know what happened, don't we? Daniel stepped out of there. And the king was happy for him because the king didn't put that. Well, he was partly responsible, but he didn't know what they were trying to do. You know, they were trying to get rid of Daniel. 
Standing on his word. We must stand on God's word every day. I'll just read a scripture here too. In John, the 14th chapter, the 22nd verse, Jesus says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And my Father will love him, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself unto him. Yes, God wants us to love him. So he can show, pour his love upon us. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not on thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all his ways. And he will lead you in your path. Direct you in your path. I want to read a scripture to you here. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a steadfast face in Christ. And I'm reading from 2 Nephi, the 14th, I mean 13th chapter. 29, 30, 31, and 32nd verse. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a, with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and love of God and all men. In other words, steadfastness means stand there, stand on his word, doesn't it? Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the words of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. That's a promise. And now, my beloved brethren, this is the way, and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. And now, behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and the only true doctrine of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God without end. Amen. Yes, God, he, he loves us so much that he wants us to, to be with him. And he's no further away than what we put him in our lives. He's knocking at your door of your spirit every day. Every day. Asking, may I come in? May I be a part of your life? And guess what? Who can open that door? Only you. You can only, uh, the one that can unlock that block out inside the door and unlock it and let him in. How do you let him in? Through prayer, putting your faith in him, studying his word, living the fruits of the spirit. And what are the fruits of the Spirit? It's joy, faith, hope, charity, kindness, meekness, gentleness. And the Lord tells us about that in, in our scriptures too. You go to the 15th chapter of John, which I like real well. Because I plant some tomato plants and, 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 and you know... It, by doing that, it let me understand, you know, that uh, the, those plants, the, the tomatoes on them, they, they come from God. And this is where it is, 15th chapter of John. I am the true vine. This is Jesus speaking. I am the true vine. The trunk of the tree or the vine of the grapes. And my father is the husband. God. <clears throat> Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And we're supposed to bear fruit, good fruit. Seek out all good things, do good things, because good things come from God. That's what God says. And I believe him. And I know you all believe him too. And he goes on and he says, every branch that... Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. And purge means to cleanse, purify. And when you know, when you turn to the Lord and you ask for God forgiveness, and, and he give, forgives you. He's a forgiving God. And when he does, you are purified. You are cleansed. It's that may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the words which I spoken unto you. 
Abide in me, and I in you. As a, far, as a branch cannot bear of its fruit of itself, except it abideth in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. Without, ye, ye, without me you can do nothing. And you think about that. I don't know what I'd do without my Lord and Savior. I don't know how people live without God in their lives. Because I'll tell you what, it feels good to, to have someone you can turn to that he's always listening and he cares and he loves you. And if you do give your all to put your faith to him, he's going to pour his spirit up on you. And I guarantee you that. He is no further away than what we put him in our lives. He loves each and every one of us. I want to read another scripture here. Come see, it's in Alma. Well, well, I didn't have it marked. I was. Let's see if I got it down here on the paper here. Anyway, the good Lord is great. And here we are. I want to go to Alma, the 19th chapter. 19th chapter, 42nd, 43rd, 44th verse. Behold, it has been made known unto me by the angels of the Spirit of all men, as soon as they are departed from the mortal body, yea, the spirit of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall come to pass that the spirit of those who are righteous are received into the state of happiness, which are called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all their cares and sorrows. And then in Alma, the 19th chapter, the 58th verse. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body of the soul, yea, and every limb and every joint shall be restored to the, its body. Ye, even the hairs of the head shall be, not be lost, but all things shall be restored to the proper and perfect frame. And now, my son, this is the restoration of which has been spoken by the mouth of the prophets, and then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, but that's where I want to be. I want to be with God in heaven. And to do that, we've got we to gotta get down on our knees and pray to our Lord and Savior, read his words and his commandments, and abide in them. And, and he will be with you. He is great. I like his creation. Every day he, he creates things a little bit different. I mean, it, it changes all the time. He never quits. And it's beautiful. It lets me know that God is. And I don't know about you, but I, I watched that movie here a while back. It's uh, called War Room. And you know what? I'm going to make me a war room. I've been thinking about it pretty seriously. Because that'd be great. I can go over there and be quiet for a while. And anyway, love you all. God loves you. And remember, he's great. And he, he loves, he is love. And, and live your life for him. Pray to him. He's listening. Pray, pray, pray. Thank you.
Our Heavenly Father, we have enjoyed so much the good message that thy servant has brought to us. And Lord, we pray that we will do our best to always do those things, Lord, that you have called us to do. We know that you love us and we love you, Lord, and we want to do the best that we can to bring forth thy kingdom. And Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us in our daily lives and bless us in our bodies, bless us in our families and bless us in this church and bless us in this nation, Father, that we might always be found ready to do those things that you have called each one of us to do and to be. So bless us to this end. And I ask for it in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.